Hello dear students. Today we are moving on to the third lecture of measurements and instrumentation. In the today's lecture we will be looking at two topics statistical error analysis and calibration of instruments. Now in the last class we had classified the errors into different types and we had seen some of the errors. Now uh, this stats, statistical error analysis is always associated with the random error. You have a large number of measurements being taken for a particular uh, product or a particular instrument and you have some errors that are happening in the system. So before we do the statistical analysis of the measurements, you have to make sure that you have removed all the systematic errors that has arise in the system or in the measurement and also you have to remove all the calibration errors. So your uh, meter has to be a good one and uh, the meter has to be properly calibrated. Then you have still you have some random errors coming in the system which does not have any particular reason. So we are trying to uh, address this random error. We are not trying to remove the random error but we are trying to specify how the measurement data is arising out. We are trying to analyze statistically analyze how this data is present in along with the measurement okay so you need to get a clear idea regarding the error hmm? still persisting in the measurement so it is mainly concerned with the precision of the instrument hmm? how accurately you are able to repeat your uh, true values and a large number of measurements are taken to make this particular statistical analysis meaningful and uh, this statistical analysis gives uh, some information regarding the best value possible from, from the data set. Also set the limits. Set the limits of uncertainty. Okay, so you have some instrument. So once you take some measurements with that particular instrument, you should you can predict that what is the best possible value that you are expecting or that you can expect out of this particular instrument. And second one is what are the sets of uh, what are the limits of uncertainty or error that is expected from the this particular instrument so that is what you do or uh, that you get once you do the entire analysis now for explaining the entire analysis i have considered this example you have a 0 to 150 volt voltmeter which is used to measure 100 volt so this is the true value or nominal value that you are expecting. A total of 50 measurements are being taken and are tabulated. So the meter is reading 99.7 single time, 99.8 volt 4 times, 99.9 times, 9 volt 12 times and so on and 100.3 single time. So once you tabulate in a histogram you will get like this. Okay. So you, you, you can see that around the average value or the mean value is somewhere hovering around this 100 volt which is again the true value. Now we need to analyze this particular uh, values that are being obtained. Now remember all the uh, errors other than random errors have been already addressed. So systematic errors, meter errors and the calibration issues all have been addressed. Now you have some random errors in the system. So we are trying to get a clear picture about the random errors. Now the first and the most easiest way is to get an arithmetic mean or to take an arithmetic mean. So you will get some approximate value hmm, when your number of observ observations are hmm, hmm, infinite. Hmm. So you have some large number of values and a large number infinite in the sense you have large number of values and the uh, mean value will be sum of the values divided by number of readings. Okay, that you know, you can take the average value. 
Now, from the example, if we calculate, you will get the average value is 99.992. Assuming or uh, having a 100 volt as the true reading. So, you are getting a mean value of 99.992. So, this, this, this in certain times we are doing it. Suppose you are uh, measuring something. Okay, you have done 10 measurements and uh, so you are trying to measure your height. Okay, and 10 people are coming to you and measuring your height. So, 10 people will be providing you with uh, uh, results which are which might differ from each other. So, ultimately, what you will do, you will take an arithmetic mean to find out the final value okay? or to end at a com uh, end at a set value or final value. Okay, so that is being done here. So, you can easily calculate uh, or get get to the result of the final value or the uh, mean using this arithmetic mean the next one is deviation from mean okay how much each reading is differing from the mean so you have some mean value okay and uh, your reading may be towards the lower side or the higher side of your mean both can happen. So, you will have positive and negative values. Okay. So, you can always uh, do this deviation frame. How much your uh, measured data is being deviated from the mean value. And if you consider the algebraic sum of all the deviations, it will be 0. You calculate all the deviations D1, D2 up to D50 and you take the sum, you will get it as 0. Okay. So, D1 is for uh, assuming that your uh, first reading is 99.8 and second is you are getting a second reading as 100.1 and for a mean of 99.992 which we have already calculated you will get the deviations like this for D1 and D2 correspondingly. Now when you take the average of all the deviations you will get average deviation. Hmm? Average value of uh, scalar values of deviation you will get the average deviation. So this this is an indication of precision of the instrument. If your value of average deviation is low, you can say that your instrument is highly precise. You have very small deviation from the average value. So, it is very precise. It may not be accurate, but it is very precise. You are getting repeatedly the same reading. So, that your uh, value of D's deviation is very small. Hmm? Remember, it is not accuracy. We are talking about precision. And that is repeatability and reproducibility. So, in this particular example, when you calculate, you will get the average deviation as 0 0.08656 volt. Okay, so this is the average deviation that you obtain. Now, uh, standard deviation is the one uh, statistical tool that we are all uh, familiar with, or we have already uh, learned in some your some of your mathematics classes. Okay, so how do you do the standard deviation? You take the sum of the deviations square it you take the square of the deviation sum it and then take the average so that is a standard deviation then ultimately you have to take the root also so you using this equation you will get the standard deviation so you are always try to reduce the standard deviation hmm? so you have calculating this standard deviation and you have you, when you get a minimum value of standard deviation that simply means that your measurements are improving or you are getting good measurements or good readings and from the example when you calculate you will get the standard deviation as 0 0.1163 volt for a 100 volt nominal value okay so this is a standard deviation that you have from the mean now we have this curve which is known as the Gaussian curve so, this also you are familiar with. So, here I have marked few regions. Okay. Now, what is this one? Here you have one sigma. Sigma is your standard deviation. So, here, here you have some region between these two uh, sigmas. One sigma and plus sigma and minus sigma. So, this is being marked as 68.2 percentage. Okay, so this area can be determined by integrating this region and for the Gaussian distribution it is found to be 68 percentage, 68.2 percentage. The region which is marked in this pink color is will be getting into 68.2 percentage and uh, 
how can you analyze this uh, particular thing hmm? what is the importance of this region 16.2 percentage and again you have some 95.4 percentage for two sigma region between two sigma so what is the purpose of this uh, gaussian distribution again this gaussian distribution is between deviation and the probability of occurrence now what is the importance of this we will take a small example we have a large number of capacitors with 10 microfarad nominal value okay and when you measure it you will get the mean value this this is your mean value okay so your uh, mean value as 10.00 this is the mean value that you are getting and uh, we know that uh, average 68 percentage of this hmm, will lie between this sigma and once you calculate you will get your sigma as 0 0.02 you are getting the value of sigma is 0, 0 0.02 so that simply means that 68 percentage of the capacitors you have a large number of capacitors and which are having nominal value of 10 microfarad and you are getting a mean value hmm? you are measuring the capacitance of each capacitor and you are getting a mean value of 10 so this this value is mean value is 10 so around 10 you have a sigma of 0 0.02 so that simply means that 68 68 percentage of capacitor values will be lying between this region that is 10 plus or minus 0 0.02 68 percentage of your uh, capacitor values will be lying between 10 plus or minus 0 0.02 okay now you have uh, something known as probable error which is also being defined here now just similar to your sigma you can consider some other region here okay now this this area is representing 50 percentage hmm? this region is 50 percentage of the entire curve this region and uh, this this limits are from 0.6745 sigma plus or minus 6745 sigma so this region is another uh, region that you are expressing as a probable error hmm? from with another another term which is known as probable error or r so r is defined as plus or minus 0 0.6745 sigma so you, you have 50 percentage of the value associated now uh, when you calculate what will what will you get when you multiply sigma with 0 0.6745 you will be getting uh, something r will be i am not sure about the value it will be something like 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.01 to something something of this sort okay uh, this value and 50% uh, of the readings will be lying between 10 plus or minus this value here 50% of the entire measure measurement so that is how you identify and uh, identify how the different readings are being taken and how you are how your readings are being expected now after analysis all this analysis i mean why, again why do you do all this analysis so after completing all this analysis the results of the measurements are to be specified now the results are expressed as deviations about the mean value now this error analysis okay and we are considering random errors once again i am telling we are considering random errors now once we do complete all the analysis you need to specify you need to specify something regarding the measured data how the data is there whether it is a good data or a bad data whether all the readings are good or all the readings are there are more erroneous values hmm, corresponding in the case of capacitor also whether all the capacitors are good or whether some of those capacitors do not comply with the 
uh, required values so that needs to be specified so that those are specified based on the things that we have already learned that is first one is based on standard deviation so the result is expressed as mean x bar is mean mean plus sigma that is mean plus or minus sigma so you'll have 68 percentage of the readings hmm, lying within this and the error limit is standard deviation hmm, x bar plus this sigma plus sigma is plus or minus some value okay so your error limit is within this so you can say that out of 100 readings taken 68 readings are lying within this you can specify like that if you are having getting a value of sigma so again sigma will be depending on the measurements that you have already taken so it can be out of for a hundred volt it can be two volt also so two volt means you have large variation large number of readings are having larger uh, standard deviation again it can also be expressed in terms of probable error that is x bar mean plus r or 0 0.6745 sigma so 50 percentage of the readings are lying within that small region so that you can specify and this sigma is again calculated again you are having another term uh, another limit known as two sigma limit so that we have already seen here here you have two sigma limit so 95.4 percentage of the readings will be lying within two sigma limits okay now this uh, these are simply to um, explain how the measurement data is there hmm? or, or analyzing how the data is in our hand hmm? you are taking large number of measurements and you, you need to specify how these measurements are done or how these values are there whether these are good values or you have large amount of error in the readings so such data needs to be specified so those are done using this and different and uh, statistical tools okay is an entirely different topic which is calibration so we have already uh, heard this term or we already have introduced this term while we were discussing our standards okay so calibration is basically the comparison of measurement values by an instrument under test with those of a calibration standard of non-accuracy okay so you have some non-standard which is having some non-accuracy which is being specified so based on that particular calibration standard based on that instrument you are trying to compare the me measurement values of the instrument under test or under our concern the, now the standard that we consider is considered or that we take is considered to be more accurate of the two hmm? and uh, we always calibrate the device under test to know how far it is deviating from the set standard this calibration includes the act of comparison and does not include subsequent adjustment so you are just comparing the values you are not making any adjustments you simply say that whether your system is having errors so you need to do some adjustments to rectify those errors so it is basically checking the accuracy of the instrument now what is the purpose of this calibration the calibration simply improves the product quality okay if you are in a plant it improves the product quality and it helps to monitor record and subsequently control all the products that are coming out of that plant hmm? see all the meters that we use are calibrated uh, we all have energy meters at our home okay before we install energy meters at our home okay we do the calibration hmm? suppose our energy meter is failing hmm? and uh, the utility KCB is asking us to replace the energy meter so we'll be buying new energy meter or rather we'll be getting new energy meter and before we install we need to get a certificate that this particular energy meter is calibrated hmm? with a standard so you have different uh, standard laboratories available in Kerala hmm? where we we can do the calibration process so we calibrate the energy meter that we have recently brought, uh, bought with the standard energy meter or standard device that we have. 
so in such a way you can ensure that the energy meter we are going to place at our home is highly accurate and it is going to read accurate uh, values okay so that is the process that we do and this is an example uh, for calibration which we again we have discussed that is calibration of voltmeter using potentiometer so here potentiometer is acting as a standard as a non standard with a non accuracy and uh, voltmeter is the device under our concern so we are trying to calibrate voltmeter with the potentiometer now i am not going to explain this particular experimental setup right now uh, we have uh, this uh, topic coming in detail in module number 3 so there we'll be uh, dedicating more time for explanation so meanwhile if you are curious you can go through the experiment thank you so much